The next type of data table is the column data table. This type of table is a little bit different than the XY tables in that each column now represents one level or factor of a single categorical grouping variable, such as in this example where we have measurements from a group of men and a group of women. In this case, the categorical variable is sex with men and women each being a level of that variable. You can also examine more than two groups, such as here where we have control, treatment one, and treatment two groups. But in any case, each column represents a single group within a grouping variable, with replicate measures from that group stacked within the column. The actual structure of a column data table is relatively straightforward. If your measurements between groups are fully independent and that they are not matched or paired in any way, you can enter them into their appropriate column in any order. However, often in an experiment we'll use matched or paired measurements. In this case, each row would represent an individual repeated or matched value, so you would want to ensure that the paired data for each group or column are entered into the same row, and you can use the row titles to identify the match set. For example, in this case, measurements from subject 4 were obtained under control, treatment 1, and treatment 2 conditions, so you would want to enter each of those data for the three values on a single row in the data table. Let's take another look at an example within the software. Going back to our teacher example, let's assume now that the teacher was no longer interested in the effects of temperature on test scores, but wanted to compare average final grades between different classes. Here you can see I have a set of final grades that are now only categorized by a single grouping variable of which class the scores came from, the algebra class, the English class, or the history class. Thus, we can create a column data table with replicate values stacked in the columns. The easiest method of getting this data into PRISM is simply to copy and paste it in. You can see that PRISM again automatically creates a graph and in this case shows the average and error for each class. I'd previously mentioned matched or paired data. If we go back to the data table, you can see we hadn't originally set up this table to accept paired data or repeated measures. However, if we realize later that each row represents grades from a single student, we can expand this first column to include the student name or identifier in the row titles. When creating a column data table, if we select paired or repeated measures on the welcome screen, this column for row titles is shown by default, and the default graph appearance will reflect this change as well. Let's copy in this same data with names into the table set up for repeated measures and look at both graphs. You can see that PRISM provides many choices by default based on the setup of your experiment, and that these two graphs, although they represent the same data, are categorized differently by your experiment and are represented differently within PRISM. Analyses for column data tables are often aimed at comparing the measured value between different groups and include various forms of the t-test and analysis of variance or ANOVA, as well as their non-parametric counterparts. From column data tables, you can also compute descriptive statistics for each group, generate a frequency distribution, perform receiver operator characteristic curve analysis, and more. Like the graphs from XY data tables, there are a vast number of ways that you can present and customize data from column data tables as well in your visualizations. This allows you to illustrate the important aspects of your research in a nearly limitless number of ways. Thank you.